What's going on? It's Anton from AntonDaniels.com. I appreciate you guys for continuing to rock with me. Yes, I am out and about in the streets. Yes, it is a Thursday. Yes, I've been running around taking care of business. It seems like it gets darker. What are they doing over there? Oh, Jesus. He riding around on the high low. I feel like it's a lot of illegal activity that's going on all around me. Probably not because I am downtown. Um, even though I am on a couple of back streets, so on and so forth. But no, nah, man, just uh, doing what I do, taking care of business. I've been out networking and meeting people and interacting and having a really, really good time. What's going on, family? But um, I did a show the other day and I did the morning live stream on a millionaire morning show. Make sure you tap into that. I did a show um, a couple days ago about Antonio Brown. And I kind of sort of jumped to conclusions without getting the other side of the story. So long story short, Antonio Brown for an extended period of time, the football player that recently got cut from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Antonio Brown for a long time has been doing knuckleheaded stuff like self-inflicted pain in a lot of ways and things like that oh i'm so glad the queue line is back up and running see the queue line over there getting it popping you got comerica over there you got the fox theater over here lots going on ladies and gentlemen but uh antonio brown for an extended period of time has been having self-inflicted issues most recently late last year you know got caught up with the vax card the fakes vax card and all that other type of stuff his chef wind up telling on him and things like that but in his most recent incident despite the fact that he had got caught up in a lot of different stuff his most recent incident it was unwarranted because he had got cut from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and he made a big scene of leaving the field and things like that and he shouldn't have did that he shouldn't have did that he should have went, went about it a professional way that way it would have been much easier for people to have a correct opinion or narrative of him even though i don't think that that would have happened either but he left the field and he threw his jersey in the stands because apparently he refused to go in and we thought that we was he was just having a meltdown rita was like yo maybe a cte maybe his mental health problems and all of that right nothing should have been off the table but the reality is that me personally, I was like, yo, head case, head case, head case, all the way around the board. Head case, head case, head case. You ever seen a union assembly? Right there. I believe that's where Eminem does his spaghetti thing and all of that. It's really, really dope. Downtown is really, really transforming. It's absolutely awesome. But let me get back to the story. So automatically i jumped to conclusions and i was like yo head case dude fumbled the bag he recently now become a fashion nova man and all of this other type of stuff but apparently he's looking to play football again but this the narrative i don't even want to go down there because got all of that music and it's going to demonetize my video but again coming back to the story the reality of it is his coach asked him to go in the game he felt like he was too injured to play. And the coach was like, yo, you done. Literally, according to Antonio Brown, he said, you done, right? And he get, did the whole neck cutting thing. Antonio Brown, disappointed, kind of sort of had a meltdown, went into the locker room, took his jersey off, frustrated, so on and so forth, right? It later came out through Antonio Brown that his coaches actually knew. He had the text messages. They had shot him up with a bunch of painkillers in order for him to be able to even play on that foot. He was in a bunch of pain, according to him. And everything just absolutely went haywire. And they was asking unreasonably for him to play in the game when he was still injured. I kind of go back to the movie Any Given Sunday. I think that's probably one of the most accurate movies as to what probably goes on in an NFL. Although, listen, I've never been behind the NFL sideline, but I've had coaching sessions with NFL players in which they've given me some insight a little bit, not too much, but a little bit of insight into what really happened. So I believe him. 
But long story short, so much more information came out and now it actually looks bad on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now it looks as though they were unreasonable. They wasn't taking his health into consideration. And I thought it was weird because I'm like, yo, Antonio Brown actually has so many incentives to play in the game. He's like eight catches away from a, a third of a million and then a couple touchdowns and then a couple yards. Basically, he had like over a million dollars in bonuses coming up and all that. I'm like, why would he do that? Like, he must really be crazy. And again, that came largely from my perspective as to how he's been acting for the majority of his career, right? But it taught me a valuable lesson in that you should not jump the gun. You have to wait till all of the information come out and optics doesn't necessarily mean the truth. So me, as a content creator, and as a person that has a, a little bit of a voice on YouTube, I felt it's only necessary for me to highlight the good and the bad. It's not always about me giving you information as to how I'm so awesome or how you need to get to the bag. It's also coming back to you and saying, yo, I could have did things differently. I could have did things better. I could have waited because even me as a content creator, you know, people be saying stuff about me. People say stuff about everybody that has any visibility whatsoever. Not just celebrities, not just football players, not just certain people. People talk about people in general. And often at times we don't give as much credence or visibility into what it is that we could have been done differently or what we did wrong or how we need to correct ourselves or how people should be vindicated versus the amount of attention that we give to the sensational story. So this may not be a sensational vlog, but I think that it's more relevant and just as, if not more, relevant than the story itself. The lesson that I'm taking from it is the same lesson that come along with a lot of these dudes that go to jail for stuff they never did, dudes that get accused of sexually assaulting women and then they get vindicated, but they never get as much coverage. They never get as much coverage, and I'm a huge advocate for this. They never get as much coverage about what it is that they did right or how they was innocent as they did when they get accused and so let me be the example let me come to you and say yo we got to do better we got to start waiting till everything play out instead of automatically assuming that somebody automatically did something no matter how egregious they pass is no matter what that is and of course i believe that he could have did things better of course what you do in the past it's going to feed into what people believe that you're going to do in the future. I don't think that you should you should ignore that. If somebody tell you that they're crazy, you got to believe them the first time. But at the same time, it does not absolve us from coming back to the table and saying, yo, we need to play things differently because it's not that. That's not what it is. All right. So I love you. I appreciate you. Sorry about the wind. But um, yeah, heading to my car so I can head to the crib. Hopefully y'all tune in to the people. Let's talk tonight. I love you. I appreciate you. Make sure you join the Patreon. The link is in the description as well as, I was about to say as well as pin to the top of the chat. I'm so used to doing the morning show. Link is in the description. If you want a personal coaching call, holler at me at antondaniels.com and email me from there. I'm going to holler at you later. Peace.